Today we're going to do a couple problems involving friction with our inclined plane. So here's one sample problem. What's the acceleration of a wood box sliding down a wood ramp that has a coefficient of 0 0.30 and an angle of 40 degrees? So helpful to start off would be to draw our diagram. And we have 40 degrees as our angle. We've got a wood box. We've got gravity pulling it down. There's a normal force acting on it. And as we know from the previous video, the normal force, since we're on an inclined plane, is the force of gravity times the cosine of the angle. Okay, but it's not the normal force that's causing it to slide down the ramp. What's causing it to slide down the ramp is the parallel component. It's not a new force, but it's the parallel component of that gravity. So to find that, that's our force of gravity, our weight, times the sine of the angle, which would be 40 degrees in this case. But it has a coefficient of friction, so we also have friction acting on it. And we want to know how fast is it accelerating down the ramp. Well, we know our perpendicular forces are going to cancel each other out. So the force of gravity you know, is broken up into its parallel and perpendicular components. The perpendicular component of gravity is going to cancel out the normal force because it's not jumping off the ramp. It's not going up or down, sinking down into the ramp. So we know these perpendicular components cancel each other out. So our net force is in the parallel direction. So our net force is equal to our parallel force minus our friction force. So this is our main equation we want to use. This is just the net force is the sum of the forces. That's all we're dealing with right now. So we need to put in all the expressions that deal with this. We have our net force is equal to the force of gravity parallel minus the force of friction. That's what we have from the previous page. So we find the net force, mass times acceleration, and that's equal to the force of gravity parallel, which is Fg parallel, opposite of what we're used to, the sine of the angle minus, okay, remember force of friction? From before was mu, our coefficient of friction, times the normal force. Okay, and from the previous one, we found that our normal force is Fg cosine theta. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this in here. And so this is going to become mu Fg cosine theta, combining our friction equation with our normal force equation. Okay, so how do we find the force of gravity? We have mass times acceleration. Force of gravity is mass. Mass times 9.8. Okay, times, we'll go ahead and put our degrees in there. Sine 40 minus our mu, which was 0.3 given in the problem. Force of gravity, mass, times 9.8 times the cosine of 40 degrees. Wow, that's a big equation. So let's kind of separate it from the rest of it. Do you notice that each of these terms has mass in it? Mass, mass, mass. So really, it doesn't matter how big this box is. The masses are all going to cancel out. So we can cancel out all our masses. And now we've got an expression for our acceleration 
that only has numbers in it because the sine of 40 is a number. So we'll go ahead and we'll do all that math and we'll get 4.05 and it's an acceleration so it's meters per second squared. So that's one type of problem we're going to be doing. It is very important when we do these problems to set up our net force equations because it's not always going to look like that as you'll see in the next problem. Okay, this problem is a little bit different. We do need the mass of our box because we've got this 100 newton force in the problem itself, which is going to, it doesn't have mass times acceleration in it. So we've got our inclined plane. It's really important to draw the free body diagram before you start. You've got your box. Okay, so you've got gravity pulling you down. You've got your normal force. Remember, gravity has a perpendicular and a parallel component, so we're going to go ahead and put in that parallel component. And it's important to say which direction we're being we're pushing this box. So let's say we're pushing it up the ramp. Let's say we're pushing it up the ramp. So we're going to push it this way. And since we're pushing it up the ramp, friction usually goes opposite the direction we're going. So we're going to hope that it's going down the ramp. So it's going to go in the opposite direction. So our net force, wow, we've got a lot of net forces here. Our, our perpendiculars are going to cancel because our perpendiculars it's not moving perpendicular to the ramp. It's not flying off the ramp this way. It's not sinking down into the ramp. So we know these guys cancel each other out. So really our net force is just going to depend on our parallel components. So our net force, since we're going up the ramp, we're going to make up the ramp the positive direction and we'll make down the ramp the negative direction. So our net force is our push minus our friction force minus the force of gravity parallel. Okay, so our mass times the our, well, let's box that. That's our expression that we're going to plug all of our things into. So our net force is our mass times our acceleration, and that equals our push, which we said was 100 newtons, minus Fg parallel. So that's our mass times gravity times the sine of 40 degrees, minus our force of friction, which we found in the last problem was mu times the mass times the gravity times the cosine of 40 degrees. Okay, so see this term doesn't have mass in it. All the other terms have mass in it. So we actually did need that mass of the box because you know if it's a heavier box you got to push it harder. If it's a lighter box you don't have to push it as hard. So let's plug in what we know. We know that we have a 50 kilogram box and we're looking for it to is equal to 100 hopefully all these other things are numbers minus 50 kilograms times 9.8, which is gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, times the sine of 40 degrees, which is a number, minus, okay, let's say it's the same coefficient of friction as we had last time, 0.3 times 50 times 9.8 times the cosine of 40. Shoo! That all fit, and look, everything in our problem here is just numbers. So when we do all of this math, it's going to take us a while. Go ahead and punch in all the numbers. Pause, pause the video. Punch in all the numbers. Make sure your number matches mine. We end up with an acceleration of negative 6.55 meters per second squared.
which brings up the question, what does that mean? Remember we had our ramp? And we said negative was down and positive was up. Guess what our box is doing? Our box is sliding down. We're trying to push it up, but it's sliding down and it's sliding down. So it's going to run into us and crash into us because down was the negative direction. So our box is basically still sliding down the ramp. So we have just a wee bit of problem here and let's see if it matters. Let's go to a new slide. Remember we had our free body diagram? Since our box is sliding down the ramp, we're pushing it with 100 newtons up the ramp. But since it's sliding down the ramp, friction is actually up the ramp because friction goes in the opposite direction. It's moving. And then we have FG parallel. So really, our net force is equal to, we know down is the dominant direction, so we're going to make that our positive direction now. And up our negative. We could keep them the same sign. That's, it doesn't matter. You have the power to determine which direction is positive and which direction is negative. I just like working with positive numbers more often. Minus 100 newtons minus the force of friction. So the 50 times our acceleration is equal to Fg parallel, which was 50 times 9.8 times the sine of 40 degrees minus 100 minus 0.3, our coefficient of friction, times 9.8 times the mass times the cosine of 40 degrees. This whole part being the normal force. This is all the normal force. And so now, solving it with all of our forces really in the correct direction, we get for our acceleration 2.04 meters per second squared, which is better than it was. At least this block isn't totally running us over as it comes down. Friction is actually here slowing it down on its way down the ramp, so it's not accelerating as fast as it was when we originally did it. Now, why did we have to redo this? We had our friction pointed in the wrong direction. And so that does affect your math. So if you end up and you had your friction pointing in the wrong direction when you do your problem, you do need to go reset up your net force equation. So don't, it's all about which direction are your net forces going. So pay attention to that. You know, the second part, all this other stuff, that's just plugging all your expressions into this net force equation. It's the net force equation itself that is more important. Okay, there are more, but that's enough for now, and I'm sure your brain is full, so I will see you later. Good luck, ladies.